Hi, Professor Subo. This is David Zima. Uh, this was the project we had discussed. I told you about where I'd like to. I wanted to design a circuit board that would include a component that would embody most of the concepts you taught in our digital systems course. Um, 3342C this past semester. So what I did is I designed two boards. This is one of them. And it has a microcontroller that actually it, it synthesizes all of the subcomponents within that you talked about throughout the course. Um, MUXs, um, shift registers, EEPROM, ROM, everything you discussed is embodied in this one chip, which I thought was a really great way to summarize the course you taught. So I have all of these input and output pins represented over here on the one side so I can configure them as an input or an output. Um, I left space to put a crystal on one side for a clock to clock the digital devices within. Side, within. I also, there's an internal oscillator which I can also employ in the code. Uh, I, I included a three volt battery. I can externally power this with this terminal right here. This is the positive and negative terminal. And I also had a three volt battery to include here as well as an on off switch to switch either power source. Now I made a second board uh, that's a little simpler uh, right here. And this board has the same microcontroller, a PIC uh, 12F508, which will run at three volts or five volts. And I have all the IO included here and here. So I just made two versions of the board. Um, I, uh, I have a machine that can cut circuit boards and I assemble these by hand. But let me go ahead and, and cover some of the other steps I took to configure this and design this. Okay, so here is the schematic, the design for the test board, the 12F508A that I just showed in the previous video. And um, you can see it has power and ground here. It has inputs and outputs that are configurable. Uh, general purpose input output 0, 1, 2, 3. And then, it, of course, a digital device that has synchronous capabilities. So as you taught us, we, uh, we need a clock. And this particular part uh, does have an internal oscillator. So the, this is an embodiment of the, uh, the one board. It has a smaller internal oscillator that, that will serve the function of a clock. Uh, these are just the header pins, the um, power and ground header that I displayed previously, the input and output pins, as well as the three volt battery and the on and off switch. Next, I'll go ahead and show the actual hardware design, which is in this, uh, this uh, video here. So you can see the microcontrollers here. And um, actually, you know, I think I may have brought up a different design I did. This is slightly different. Uh, so I apologize. The fundamental design is the same. This is a uh, power here, on off switch, the battery, and the micro controller with all the digital devices within with the on off, um, excuse me, the IO here, as well as the crystal internal oscillator. So all the traces, if I, if I turn off the traces here, uh, which I think I can do, right here. There we are. So if I turn off that, you can see the connection interconnections between all of the IO and the headers, the battery and the headers, the power switch. You can see and the board outline is of course right around the edges here. So I thought this would be helpful also to show the layout that I created in order to fabricate and produce the test board, digital test board. And of course lastly I like to cover the architecture of the part. So this is what really caught my attention. I thought it would be a really good match for this project is this is an internal block diagram of what is inside the microcontroller. Uh, we have several components, if not all of them, that you had covered uh, in the course. We have uh, to start with, this is synchronous capability. So there's a timing generator. There's an oscillator here that will clock different parts of the of the different digital devices. The same symbology you use in the course it teaches is right here, this bus symbol that shows how many interconnects are going through different subcomponents of the, the architecture of the device. Uh, here we have uh, RAM uh, 25 by 8 
or 41 by 8 depending on the type. There's a few different versions of this part. File registers which we covered, RAM addresses, uh, a bus here of 9, the MUX or a multiplexer input and output. Uh, we have, I think you at one point you mentioned a stack in, the, in the, one, of our, one of our lectures. So we also have instruction registers. Uh, there, one thing, one thing that we didn't actually cover was, and I don't think an arithmetic logic unit, which what a microcontroller has, but digital devices don't. So I really thought this was a great way to do a summary of everything taught in the course, Professor Subo, and I thought you might appreciate this. Okay, continuing on with the actual, uh, I have some code here that I wrote. It's an averaging routine, which illustrates basic function of a shift register. Um, there are variable definitions here that configure all of the different registers and how they're going to be used, and something called an origin for the code. And this is old machine language. This is, I think, the most clear, clearest way to illustrate uh, what's actually going on in the digital subcomponents as we saw in the previous uh, PDF. So here you have um, uh, a, the setup, some of the, the basic setups of swap commands that tell one digital component to swap nibbles or entire bytes of other components. Uh, here we have what's called a get data. Uh, this is an averaging routine, so we start with an average of zero here. And then we move from one register to a working register, and we use mnemonics to label the actual values that we're moving. Here's the move, move of a literal uh, of four. Since we're going to actually take four averages, we initialize a counter with four. So we're constantly taking four averages. Then the, the primary part of this routine just illustrates the basic function of a shift register, as we discussed. So here we have um, a. Um, we're, we're clearing an entire file called a status file, and there are status bits that associate it with these registers. And this is a write rotate command that will actually, as you showed us in the course, you can rotate bytes left. If I had a rotate L and RL F command here, it would rotate to the left. In this case, I'm rotating to the right. It's really arbitrary. So there's a write, there's a write into what's called a carry bit and um, this one designates that carry bit. So I really thought this was just a really great way to illustrate some of the last things you taught us in the summary of the course. So I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. I, there's so much more I had. I realize you're a very busy uh, individual, especially since you're finalizing uh, uh, the course right now. So I really thought I'd try to limit this to five minutes. I went a little over six minutes, so forgive me, but I hope, uh, hope this was helpful and you enjoyed it. And let me know if I can answer any questions. Thanks very much. And thanks very much for the course. I really enjoyed it. Hope you have a hope you have a good rest for the next three weeks before our next semester starts.